Hello, sweet friends, and welcome back for another Read Aloud. I would like to share the story of the great K-Poke or k pok tree. Um, people will pronounce this word differently. Um, some say K-Poke or k pok um, I like K-Poke, but I'm not a thousand percent sure that that is correct. However, it is a tale of the Amazon rainforest by Lynn Cherry. So we're going to say the great K-Poke, but you may hear people say k pok um, so this is a, a letter from Lynn that wrote the story, and it says, Dear readers, I wrote the great capote tree to let the world know what happens to the rainforest creatures and to the entire planet when rainforests are destroyed. I hope that after reading this book, you will help save the rainforest. The great capote tree is about the Amazon rainforest, a tropical rainforest, but we have a temperate rainforest in the Pacific Northwest of the United States that we must protect too. To save acres in the tropical rainforest, write the Children's Rainforest, P.O. Box 936, Lewiston, Maine, 04240. Please care for Mother Earth. Together, we can make a difference. Lynn Cherry. So, she wrote this. Now, rainforests are important. Um, a lot of people go into rainforests and cut down these massive trees that have been growing for hundreds and hundreds, maybe even thousands of years. Um, for the wood and they just clear cut everything and they don't think about the animals or any of the other plants that live under these trees. Um, they really have no thought about what will happen to them once they take the trees away. And yes, we can replant trees, but remember these trees grew for a very long time and it's going to take a long time to grow them back. So a lot of people will say we need to protect them because it's not just trees. It's not just a forest. It has thousands of animals that call this forest home. So let's see what happens in the great Cape Hope tree. Now last week we talked about maps. Here is a map of our planet. Do you see the green spots? Those are places where rainforests are on our planet. And there's animals and plants and insects all around the map that are found in these places. Now a rainforest has layers, right? So over here on the side, it shows you some of the different layers. The top, it says this is the emergence, okay, up here. This is the canopy part here. The canopy is like the middle or the top part of the trees. You have the middle layer. You have a shrub layer, which is like bushes and low-lying plants. And then the herb layer or the herb layer down here. Um, this is where you might have some sparse grass or like plants that grow like vines across the ground. Um, so yeah, so things live all through those layers. So here we go, the great cape poke tree. Two men walked into the rainforest moments before the forest had been alive with the sounds of squawking birds and howling monkeys. Now all was quiet. As the creatures watched the two men, and wondered why they had come. The larger man stopped and pointed to a great capo tree. Then he left. Why are those men there? Why did one stay looking at this massive tree and the other one leave? The animals are not used to seeing humans in the rainforest. So they're a little confused, so they're watching. All right, let's see why he's there. The smaller man took the ax he was carrying and struck the trunk of the tree. Whack, whack, whack. The sounds of the blows rang through the rainforest. The wood of the tree was very hard. Chop, chop, chop. The man wiped off the sweat that ran down his face and neck. Whack, chop, whack, chop. Soon, the man grew tired. He sat down to rest at the foot of the great cape oak tree. Before he knew it, the heat and hum of the forest had lulled him to sleep. So if you look very closely at the picture, do you see some animals? So why did the two men come into the forest? right they wanted to pick out the tree that they were going to chop down now he has a very small axe so this is not going to take a very short amount of time um but look at all the 
animals that are living around that tree? Did anyone ask them if they could cut down the tree? Probably not. A boa constrictor that lived in the cape oak tree, he slithered down its trunk to where the man was sleeping. He looked at the gash the axe had made in the tree. Then the huge snake slid very close to the man and hissed in his ear, Senor, this tree is a tree of miracles. It is my home where generations of my ancestors have lived. Do not chop it down. Now, this snake easily could have wrapped his body around the man and ate him for lunch. But is that what the boa constrictor did? No, he whispered into the man's ear. A bee buzzed in the man's ear. Senor, my hive, my hive is in this cape oak tree, and I fly from tree to tree and flower to flower collecting pollen. In this way, I pollinate the trees and flowers throughout the rainforest. You see, all living things depend on each other. Look at the beautiful butterflies. Do you see the bee by the man's ear? He said, you don't understand. My hive, the beehive, is up in this tree, and if you cut it down, we will be homeless. He said, please don't do that, because we're very busy working in the forest. A troop of monkeys scampered down from the canopy of the cape oak tree. They chattered to the sleeping man. Senor, we have seen the ways of man. You chop down one tree, then come back for another and another. The roots of these great trees will wither and die, and there will be nothing left to hold the earth in place. When the heavy rains come, the soil will be washed away, and the forest will become a desert. Which is true. The roots of the plants hold the soil in place. Without it, all the good soil will wash away, and it will become a desert. Where will the monkeys go if it's a desert? Where will the snakes go if it's a desert? Where will the insects go? A toucan, a macaw, and a cock of the rock flew down from the canopy. Senor, squawked the toucan, you must not cut down this tree. We have flown over the rainforest and seen what happens when you begin to chop down trees. Many people settle on the land they set fires to clear the underbrush, and soon the whole forest disappears. Where once there was life and beauty, only black and smoldering ruins remain. He's like, we've flown in sea, so we have the toucan, the macaw, and the cock of the rock. They're like, hmm, what you're doing is not good. We have seen what happens. You take what you want and you burn the rest. What a shame, because doesn't it look beautiful there? A bright and small tree frog claw crawled along the edge of a leaf. In a squeaky voice, he piped into the man's ear. Senor, a ruined rainforest means ruined lives. Many ruined lives. You will leave many of us homeless if you chop down this great cape oak tree. And that's true. We've seen snakes and birds, and insects, and monkeys, and frogs. All of these animals live in this tree, this one tree. A jaguar had been sleeping along the branch in the middle of the tree. Because his spotted coat blended into the dappled light and shadows of the understory, no one had noticed him. Now he leapt down and padded silently over to the sleeping man. He growled in his ear, Senor, the cape oak tree is home to many birds and animals. If you cut it down, where will I find my dinner? Again, the jaguar could have easily eaten the man, but instead of doing that, he 
he's talking into his ear. Now the man is asleep. Do you think he's hearing all these things? Let's keep going. Four tree porcupines swung down from branch to branch and whispered in the man's ear, Senor, do you know what we animals and humans need in order to live? Oxygen, air. And Senor, do you know what trees produce? Oxygen. If you cut down the forest, you will destroy that which gives us all life trees do. They clean the air for us. Look at the tree porcupines. They're like, if you cut, start cutting down the trees, where are we going to get oxygen from? But be mindful of these things. Several anteaters climbed down the cape oak tree with their young clinging to their backs. The unstriped anteater said to the sleeping man, Senor, you are chopping down this tree with no thought of the future. And surely you know that what happens tomorrow depends on what you do today. The big man tells you to chop down a beautiful tree. He does not think of his own children who tomorrow must live in a world without trees. Which is true. If we continue to chop down trees at a faster rate than they can grow back, People may one day have to go to a museum to see a tree and not in their backyard. That's a scary thought, isn't it? A three-toed sloth be had begun climbing down from the canopy when the man first appeared. Only now did she reach the ground. Plodding every so slowly over to the sleeping man, she spoke in her deep, lazy voice. Senor, how much is beauty worth? Can you live without it? If you destroy the beauty of the rainforest, on what would you feast your eyes? She's like, what would you rather look at? A beautiful forest full of life or tall city buildings? Which is more beautiful? A child from the Yenamemo tribe who lived in the rainforest knelt over the sleeping man. He murmured in his ear, Senor, when you awake, please look upon us with new eyes. So there are tribes of people who live in the rainforest, but they don't hurt the forest. They don't cut the trees down. It is their home. So he's telling the man, he's like, when you wake up, please look at us. Look at us and think about what you're about to do. The man awoke with a start. Before him stood the rainforest child and all around him staring were the creatures who depended upon the great cape oak tree. What wondrous and rare animals they were. Wow, look at all those cool animals. All of them live in that tree. What do you think the man is thinking right now? If you're sitting with someone, tell them, what is the man thinking? What would you be thinking? If you don't have someone to talk to, tell your hand. Hold on to it, shake it, and let it go so someone else can hear your thoughts. All right, let's see what happens. The man looked about and saw the sun streaming through the canopy. Spots of brown light glowed like jewels amidst the, the dark green forest. Strange and beautiful plants seemed to dangle in the air, suspended from the great capote tree. The man smelled the fragrant perfume of their flowers. He felt the steamy mist rising from the forest floor, but he heard no sounds, for the creatures were strangely silent. Why are they being so quiet? Maybe they're waiting to see what he will do. 
What will he do? What do you think the man is going to do? Let's see if you're right. The man stood and picked up his axe. He swung back his arm as though to strike the tree. Suddenly, he stopped. He turned and looked at the animals and the child. Do you see where he'd already cut some? So do you, do you think he's trying to figure out what's the right thing to do? Let's see if he makes a good choice. The man hesitated. Then he dropped the axe and walked out of the rainforest. Did he make a good choice? Sure he did. He's gonna let them live in peace. Their messages worked, didn't they? He realized that what he was about to do was not what was best for everyone who lived there. Now, this is a picture of Lynn Cherry sitting in a real rainforest. Look, she's drawing pictures and gathering information to write this story. It says, Lynn Cherry traveled to the Amazon rainforest in Brazil to research the illustrations for the great Cape Hook tree. As she sat by a jungle stream, a troop of monkeys swung through the trees above her head. A paca scurried by her feet, and a hummingbird hovered only a foot away. She wrote and illustrated the great Cape Hook tree to give her readers a glimpse of the awesome beauty of the rainforest and the marvelous creatures that inhabit it, and to remind them that if it is being destroyed, sorry, and to remind them it is being destroyed at an alarming rate. So that is the great Cape Hook tree. I hope you enjoyed the story and maybe it made you think about some things that you had not thought about before. Find someone in your house today that didn't listen to this story and tell them what happened. What did the animals say to the man and did it work? All right, I hope you enjoyed this and I will see you again next time.